Hello, welcome back to the Micro Foundry Workshop. We haven't put out a video for the last 12 months and our thinking there was that uh, our videos show the whole process of uh, you making jewellery castings for yourselves at home, custom castings, but it occurs to us now that uh, there's some scope for adding some extra focus, some interest to your basic metal castings by adding features like, and some of the popular features are electroplating or enamelling, which we know nothing about, but another popular addition is ge uh, adding gemstones. So that's what we'd like to talk about now, how you might take rings like this, and we've got uh, you know the, the, the traditional plain band, and what I think is quite an attractive little silver ring, but solid, solid metal, and by working at the wax stage, the wax for, for this, this ring can be modified to include a setting for a stone. You need to know the size of the stone you're working with. In this case it was a 5mm stone, a round stone, which is nice and easy because the, the setting can be opened up in the wax with the 5mm drill and the job is cast and cleaned up, polished, so we're looking at the completed ring minus its stone and then you can glue in the stone with a modern adhesive. There are specialised adhesives for setting gemstones, they work very well, they're very durable, they're, they're, they're quite resilient so a knock doesn't usually jar them out. But of course they're not quite as secure as having a full mechanical clamp on the stone. And so as well as gluing, you can use a mechanical setting, which means that the casting, again, which is, is a, a fully finished casting, contains these setting pieces, which are the prongs. In this case there are six of them sticking up. And the prongs are spaced so with the the inside diameter is about a millimeter less than the di the girdle diameter of the stone and then we're using a small cutter a little burr a heart burr like this you cut in obviously at the right height and the same height on each one of the the settings what amounts to a little circlet groove to make a groove and a setting for the for the stone so that when you mount the stone table down that is the pointy uh, end of the of a brilliant cut the pavilion of, of the stone is uppermost press the ring down onto the stone press the stone in until it clicks into the groove that you've cut and then mechanically lock it by peening or burnishing or just plain bending the ends of the prongs over to give a nice tight fit and silver and gold are malleable to the extent that once they're bent down they don't tend to spring back they stay locked and that is the most durable setting of the two adhesives nice and easy but not quite as durable as having mechanical lock the problem with the mechanical setting is that you need to work very precisely and if you haven't got that sort of background then an easy alternative certainly while you're, you're learning is to not cast the sorry not set the stones in the metal but set them in the wax and if you if you do this in the wax stage you make a slight modification because if you're using a 5 mil stone now you have a 5 mil inside spacing between your prongs and again the table of the brilliant cut stone goes down point uppermost press that down into the ring adjust it by pushing down to give the height that, that you want and then using the, your smallest wax pen introduce a small amount of wax from the end of each of the settings over the girdle and onto the crown of the ring so you've got a positive location on the top of the 
stone and then very, very carefully working from the bottom introduce a small fillet of wax between the pavilion that's the, the pointy part of the stone and the inside of the setting that flows down onto the pavilion and we've got now a positive lock on the bottom and the top of the stone and we've got support in the wax top and bottom and also very importantly at when the, when the stone has been invested we've got the investment flowed over the top of the stone which always happens because the, the top of the stone is always exposed but in this technique it's important that you expose the bottom of the stone as well so that the investment flows in and locates the bottom of the stone so once the wax has been melted out the investment is holding it top and bottom for support at this stage the waxing is done and the casting is just like any any other the technique is easy because you can practice just at this elemental stage practice with strips of wax trying your different settings you can use some open work or just close it into to to the shank it costs it costs nothing the manufactured diamonds are very cheap and to give a little bit of sparkle to your to your casting setting stones works well if you're going to cast them into the wax you do need to make sure that you've got stones that will take the temperature that we're talking about silver gold and bronze are fairly modest in jewelry terms but you do need something like zirconium cz cubic zirconium to take the temperature and the crystal crystal glass will not stand casting in in the in wax and there's some examples here of a plain ring which has been added to give it some sparkle with some clear zirconia and the way in which you can open up your own designs when you've developed them on on here you can build them into your ring and it gives quite a custom quite a different look to a, ba a basic casting